Hello, welcome to Love, Laughter, and Limits. I'm Tom Dozier, and in this segment we're going to talk about helping our children listen and cooperate and specifically come when they're called. And I would like to show you, start by showing you a clip of a real mom and her kids and the way the, she calls her kids and the way the kids come so quickly. So let's watch that now. Hey, I know you're not done cleaning. Thanks. What would you like to watch? And I'll get the movie ready. Um, let's watch, watch your Christmas. Wait, it's on the Christmas. Okay, finish cleaning up. And when you're done, we'll watch that movie. Wow, look how quickly they came. Can you believe that? Let's watch that one more time. Watch and I'll get the movie ready. Let's watch, watch your Christmas. Wait, it's on the green. Okay, finish cleaning up, and when you're done, we'll watch that movie. Okay, now that was pretty amazing, uh, I think. The kids were very cooperative, they were very happy when they came. And I have the mom with me today, Melissa. Melissa, would you step onto the screen? So everybody can see you. And I'd like you to tell me just a little bit and tell the moms a little bit about why you have this unique way of calling them. About seven years ago when my kids were one and two, um, we had moved from a fairly manageable size house into one that was very large. And I found myself repeatedly yelling through the house, Benjamin, Caitlin, and I was kind of tired of hearing my own voice and having no results. Um, and then I got into a routine where I would call them, Bindi Katie, Bindi Katie, and they would come. They would hear that tonality of, of better. And I realized that when they heard that, it would be easier for me to use something that was more tonal and less language oriented. So I decided that this is what I wanted. And in order to get that, I used some behavioral training techniques okay. to reward them when they did what I required. Okay, well tell us about how you trained your kids to come so quickly and so happily. Right, it only took a few days. Um, what I did is I found out what they loved, and they loved jelly bellies. Just these little jelly bellies, yep. colorful, bright, sweet. Mm -hmm. And I got a bowl and put out a bowl that to them seemed very large. It was just about a five inch bowl full of these jelly beans. And I said, this is what we're gonna do. When you're playing and you hear me go, la 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 la, come real fast and you'll get a jelly bean. They thought this was a great game. And so we played this game a couple of times a day for the next few days. In fact, we played it a couple of times the first hour and they would run off into yeah. different parts of the house where I couldn't see them. And then I'd call and they'd come and they'd pick their favorite color out of the bowl. Okay. So after about four days, they were pretty set. I kept the bowl on the countertop. Okay. And they got a jelly bean maybe once a day, maybe a few times a week. Uh, but they would come multiple times throughout the day. Now, did they complain when they didn't get a jelly bean? Did they say, hey, mom, where's our jelly bean? Well, no, because I think... The first few times they got that jelly bean, the next few times they got smiles, laughs, kisses, hugs, high okay. fives, and and they were pretty excited to still come. Okay. I think once or twice they may have asked, hey, do I get a jelly bean? I said, well, not this time, next time. Okay. And then they would get that jelly bean. So throughout the years we've used this, I've used this technique, my husband's call doesn't work. They're trained to come to my voice. And, and it's very effective. Um, if I need to know where they are, I can find them quickly without worrying. Tell us a story. Oh, in fact, one time we were um, in a very large, crowded shopping mall. And normally I keep my kids pretty close. And at one point I looked up and could not find one of my children. And that first moment of panic and fear and shock... I was just ready to, you know, go into shakes. And, and then I remembered, well, I'll just call them. And I sent out the call and right away I heard coming. 
from both children and I just immediately was at peace, <laughs> not worrying that they were gone, lost, or taken. Um, so that's one case where that's been very effective. Okay. How about some another situation? Um, in other cases, it's just good to say, hey, it's going to be time to roll out of the house. Uh, I can now let them get themselves ready. They know that they're supposed to be ready, and when it's time to go, I call, they come, and we're out of the house. Instead of doing a 30-minute ritual of, okay, it's time to go. Well, it's not really time to go because you're waiting for some other person. And, and that gets very disheartening as okay. they're waiting and being patient. So let me ask you another question now. Do you ever, is it always fun and games and cheery mom when you call them? It's I not. Mean, I mean, I, I noticed that this clip, you were very positive. When they came, you said, thank you for coming, or I think you just said thanks. And then you had talked about having the movie that was going to be after they finished their chores, mm -hmm. and you sent them off to finish their chores with something mm -hmm. good to follow. But... Probably about, about yeah, probably about 90% of the time it is preemptively happy. If I waited until they were done cleaning the room, okay. there wouldn't be as much of a need to call them to tell them something fun was going to happen afterward. So if I, if I call a little early and find out what's going on, they like to have a happy plan. Okay. But on occasion, I will hear them fighting or bickering in another part of the house. And what will you do then? I will call them, and they will come. You will go your la 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 la. That's right? right, la 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 la, and they come. Yes, mom. Yes, mom. And I'll just ask them, "Do I need to solve a problem for you?" And typically, they'll say, "No, we can solve it ourselves." Why are they so independent in solving their problems themselves? Well, when they were little. I basically gave them an option of I could solve the problem or they could solve the problem. And when mom solves the problem, the solution yeah. just isn't near so fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of if they're fighting over a toy and they can agree how to share it amongst themselves, right. the toy would go to a timeout. And then nobody's happy. And the toy so. is gone for a couple of days. And it's just not near as good of a solution okay. as the one they could come up with. And uh, let me go back to the tra to teaching your children to come when you call them. How old were they when you actually started using this lilting tonal call? They were one and two years they old. They were literally one and two. Yes. So they've been doing this a while. Yes. And uh, I saw Melissa do this with another little child, a, a relative of hers, a nephew yeah. of hers, who is now two. Let's watch this clip of your nephew. And it took about, what, two or three times getting a super small, super miniature, miniature chocolate, chip. chocolate chip. And now he comes also when, he's, when yes. the call goes out. Yes. And, and uh, 48 hours later, he doesn't need a reward every time. Okay. So that's a key point. See, a lot of parents worry that you're going to start something like this with a jelly bean or a treat or some form of specific reward and you'll be into rewards forever. I was worried that we would go through jelly bellies for the rest of our life, but pretty soon that tapered off and they were glad to have hugs, high fives, or the prospect of watching a movie later. Okay. And once again, that was only a few days that you used the jelly beans to, Correct. to do that. So. I should also mention that although I use this with my small nephew, I have done this with um, some neighborhood kids who we have the fortune of playing with quite often. And we play with them often enough that it's good to be able to call them all for lunch or to tell them all that they have 15 minutes till okay. it's time to go home. And they were older. They are seven and five. And the same thing worked. We used Skittles okay. instead of jelly beans, but that was okay. what they liked. And it only took one day. Again, the same kind of thing. We played the game. Okay. We played it three times. And then in that first day, I probably called them about half a dozen times okay. while we played over the space of four or five hours. Okay. And did they just to your same normal call? To, to my your same call. normal call. The same okay. one I use for my children. Okay. 
And, and then in the following week, maybe a treat once a day, but they will come every time I call now. Great. And that just makes it easy. But they're older, and they were just as easily... To train. To train, yeah. Yeah, and let's talk, call it to teach, right? To teach. You're right. <laughs> to, teach. to teach. But there was something I noticed um, with, with Melissa's kids uh, when I was watching her do this. Uh, one of the children was eating, uh, and when she called, there was actually a kind of a reflex jerk, a startle reaction, and a quick desire to, to get moving and go to mom. And so what, you, what Melissa has here is a situation where the children want to come running quickly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost this reflex reaction that, like a blink reaction when something comes towards your eyes, that when they hear that call from mom, they don't go, well, let's see, what have I been doing? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Mm -hmm. It's simply... A default automatic reaction to say coming and come running. Well, and as a mother, that's convenient in my day to day life, but as I mentioned, being lost in a crowd, yes. that was a real safer for me. Right. So and they and they're very happy about it. See, that's the other point about this is there's no frustration on the part of the kids. They are not feeling put upon, coerced, compelled. In any way, in fact, it's generally, well, it's a positive opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. It's a time to go see mom and say, hey, what does mom want? Mm -hmm. And so it's a very positive thing, and there's nothing, nothing negative at all in the situation. All right, well, thank you very much for showing that, sharing that with us and uh, allowing us to show that video. I just wanted to let you know, to say, you know, this stuff really works in real-life situations with real moms, and it works really well. And part of it is just because uh, it's a fundamental behavior principle, right? Mom puts out the call. The behavior that's expected from the kids is to come running and say coming so that she knows they're coming. And to come running, and then there is generally a positive payoff. Uh, when I was a boy, my mom had a little silver dinner bell. The bell part was about that high with the handles only about that size. And she allowed my brother and I to roam the neighborhood, well, one street, to roam the street about two blocks long and play with our friends. But at 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock, she'd come out and she would ring that bell or she'd come out at lunchtime and ring that bell and we would come running. And it was always dinner time. We weren't reprimanded. We weren't scolded. But we knew that mom expected us to come when the bell rang. And because we did that, she gave us quite generous privileges of roaming the neighborhood, which is probably not appropriate anymore considering, that it's considering the dangers and such that are out there in the neighborhood. But this was in the, uh, in the early 60s. And so... Once again, it was that similar kind of a thing. There was a ring sound, a unique sound, and we could be a block away and we would hear that little silver bell and we would hop on our bikes and we would go home for lunch or for dinner. So uh, just having something that you expect of your children and then having it paid off in a positive way, not a super way, just a regular positive way. And also, it was very clear, uh, Melissa taught the kids what she expected and then you role played it right yes. you probably when you were teaching them you didn't just say to leave it to chance for them to yell coming no it was the funnest game we had where they got to for about 15 minutes maybe hide throughout the house and practice that game yeah so you practice you taught them what to do you had a game out of it you had a really strong payoff mm -hmm. and um uh, there you go. It's worked well. Right. Now, one thing about payoffs is you want to keep them small enough so that the kids will keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Right? If every time they would have come at first, you would have given them a handful of jelly beans, well, they would have gotten sick of jelly beans and it wouldn't, wouldn't have been the same fun game. That's right. So you have to be careful not to have your, your reward, your treat, so big that it, uh, it satiates them, it wipes them out. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate you coming.
So, thank you for watching this segment of Love, Laughter, and Limits and seeing a real example of how quickly uh, children can cooperate and obey and come when they're called. And this is Tom Dozier wishing you happy parenting. Thank you.